Today I want to give a quick update on this little Wabikusa Immersed Growth aquatic plant setup. Yeah, so you can see the general impression. I think it looks pretty nice. Definitely grown out a lot more since we planted it initially. All the plants are doing pretty good. Let's uh, take a closer look. So yeah, I think that kind of the stars of the show are these crypts. They're the pink flamingo crypts and they get a really nice pink color. I kind of suspect that they're not adapted to the immersed growth yet because they're throwing out leaves that are more like uh, the submerged growth. And you can see some, there's been some melt. Um, but it seems to be growing okay, throwing out lots of new leaves. So I'm just gonna keep a close eye on it, try to think about how I can improve its growing conditions. If you notice, the new leaves that come out are in this kind of tight, um, they're like kind of wrapped up tightly and then they unfurl into the, you know, these kind of submerged growth crib leaves. Which, yeah, they seem to be doing okay above the, um, uh, you know, above the water, but I don't know, it doesn't seem optimal. This, I think this kind of leaf down here is more like a immersed, uh, yeah, immersed growth leaf. But those are from the initial tissue culture and I haven't really been getting more of those. The Nubius Snow White, it's definitely, it's coming back. Remember in the last video that we saw, it was pretty much all melted, it looked kind of stumpy. But yeah, it's coming back. It's got some nice green leaves and um, yeah, I think it's doing all right. Glossostigma has gone a little bit crazy. I've actually been trimming it in this area to try to allow the slower growing plants to compete more, but you can see it's still going a little bit crazy. Yeah, and the, uh, I also have a, a boost here. You can't really tell, but it's this random leaf down here, and you can see there's a few nice new green leaves attached to it. Oh, it's rooted already too, which is a new development. Um, you can see here, yeah. it's got leaves, they kind of look like glosso, but they're a little bit rounder. That's actually the Bucephalandra Bukit Batang. And uh, I actually got some more of that because I thought, okay, you know, I have a batch that melted, but, um, yeah, that, that also melted. So I think that this is just a very sensitive type of boost. But uh, I have one little guy there. You can see its leaves right there. Yeah, the new nice bright green leaves. And hopefully that will do okay as well. Um, yeah, Glossa stigma is interesting. Kind of sending its roots all down the side of the pot, sending some growth into the water. Um, when I did my beta tank, I actually dropped a few uh, Rotala Atra stems that I couldn't fit in there into this setup. And they weren't doing anything. They were just kind of dormant for a long time. But all of a sudden they come up with this nice colored, you can see here, oh, this kind of nicely colored uh, immersed growth with very, very different leaf shape than in the bed tank. So that's really exciting to see. I also pulled out a lot of this. Uh, this is Lu the Ludwigia arcuata. It looks a lot different, doesn't it? Um, well, actually, uh, here I'll show a picture of what it looked like while it was kind of more humidity. Oh, yeah, so uh, I. I used to have this little lid on top, if you remember the last video, to keep up the humidity, but I don't really use it anymore. Uh, and it kind of shocked a lot of the plants, so they kind of had some dieback, but now they're sending on new immersed growth. And it's part of the process of acclimating them to immersed growth. You can't just, for tissue culture plants, you can't just stick them out into the dry air. You need to sort of acclimate them. But so these are, I think, done acclimating. 
The submerged style leaves are kind of dying off. They're still around, but they're turning brown and falling off. But you can see this, these immersed growth is like a little bit waxy, shorter leaves. Looks nice uh, in this setting, kind of very, you know, robust looking. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with the color of the Atra versus the color of all these uh, Ludwigi Arcuatas. Now, I also put in some of this Salvinia. I do uh, mist the tank. I just misted it, as you can see. So like, I think that the Salvinia doesn't like getting misted. So some of the older sections are kind of, they look a little crusty, but it's growing fast. You know, it's uh, doing its thing. So I can't really complain about the Salvinia right here. Yeah, it's very, it's very cheap, very nice. And if you look back, it has a nice appearance. It goes well with this kind of pond theme. Yeah, this is just a, you can see, this is kind of a crazy part where we have this Microcarpea minima. It was looking really nice actually, um, before I lifted the lid. It kind of like the more submerged conditions, I think, uh, the high humidity, but it's growing fine. A little bit of yellowing, but, Growth is extremely fast. You can see how much it's taken over this area. Here's like one stem of Monte Carlo I dropped. It's, it's gone crazy too, but it's a little bit restricted. I put it in later. It's also from uh, making the beta tank. So yeah, I just had tons of extra Monte Carlo. I didn't know what to do with it. So I put one little patch in here and it's really taken off. Looks really nice. Glosso, you can see there's some big Glosso leaves there. I think that's the immersed maybe glosso yeah i don't know why this gloss is so big but uh yeah now like i kind of get a feeling why dry start method works so well right because <laughs> like these carpeting plants just go nuts um in this kind of immersed style setup yeah here you can see this is a little bit of the uh Ludwigia arcuata, some of the le dead leaves, again, the submerged growth leaves dying off. But here's the uh, Anubius minima. I actually, I really like it. Some of the leaves, I don't know if it's a deficiency, but they're having a little bit of a different color with more veining to them instead of just the glossy dark green. But yeah, I like the, the shape of the leaves. It's very nice and long and... Um, I just think it looks nice. It's growing really robustly, strongly rooted in there. So um, I actually got another one of those too for my new project. Yeah, here you can see, this is a good example of a Ludwigia arcuata that still has a lot of its uh, submerged growth leaves. You can see these long ones are the submerged growth. And that, yeah, it's very kind of interesting because those leaves got all waxy. They were able to adapt, sort of, even though they're the wrong shape, the wrong color, they got kind of got waxy and then they adapted to the immersed growth conditions. Yeah, well, again, while I was making the beta tank, I put one little sprig of the Myriophyllum and uh, it's right there. Yeah, it, uh, it just popped out all of a sudden. Now it's drying out a little bit, but it looks like it's doing okay. Growth is definitely different on this one, isn't it? Than the submerged ones. The submerged ones kind of look more like pine needles. This one kind of looks more mossy. And finally, we have the Ludwigia Arcuata. Just, this is a huge bunch of it. I actually sold off half of it, but I still, you know, it just grows to like replace itself. Um, yeah, I, so, I sold off some of the stuff that was in here. There's a little bit of a submerged section where things are kind of growing a little bit more submerged style. But it's doing pretty good too. And then we're back here to the place with the Anubius Petite, or the Anubius Snow White and the Crypt Flamingo. So the maintenance of the system is pretty easy. I just, um, spray it with that spray bottle. By the way, I don't recommend that spray bottle, but uh, when I was looking for spray bottles, a lot of them said like, you know, you couldn't use them for food. So I guess they were for like cleaning chemicals. 
So I just bought this spray bottle that was for pets. Not very expensive, but yeah, it kind of shows its price. I've had an awesome time so far with this little setup, especially learning about aquatic plants and their immersed growth. It's amazing how these little guys can adapt to all sorts of different conditions, and no matter what, they always manage to look amazing. Until next time, take care.